No Bigfooters or Sasquatch were harmed during the filming of this video. Just their pride. Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. It's Wednesday night, and that means this is the Journey Radio Show. Hey, we're showing up as the She Squatchers. I'm your host, Jen Cruz, and I've got my trusty teammate, Jenna Grover, on the line. Hey, Jenna, are you there? I am, and I'm super, super excited to see someone I have not seen for a very long time in person. This is as close as it gets, so woohoo! It is, it is. We haven't seen Michael for like almost a year it's been almost a year yes so, i wasn't sure i wasn't sure if i should have used his name or not sorry about that <laughs> all right well i got we've got a special guest on tonight we've got michael cook coming to us tonight uh he's coming to share his horrifying bigfoot encounter well, let me just tell you a little bit um from the travel channels latest show uh these woods are haunted season two episode entitled was it haunting or was it hunting us? Was it hunting us? Michael Cook, Bigfoot researcher for 20 years. He's a chef. Well, if this isn't the big, beautiful Bigfoot Club, I don't know what is. Now, I feel like I just woke up in the middle of a Weight Watchers Bigfoot Zoom call. Oh, God, look at him. I don't want to look like him. Oh, I got to go to the gym. I got to exercise. Oh, I don't want to look like Michael Cook. Oh. Hey, my little Squatch Monsters. It's time to shake up the Bigfoot community. This is Off the Richter. It is not easy to constantly produce Bigfoot stuff. Because I'm going to film one today for you, I think. Maybe not physically like as we know it, but like where you could see it really good. Oh boy, here we go. Make sure your seats are raised and tray tables locked in the upright position. This is a show where I roast Bigfoot attention whores and hoaxers and Bigfoot superstars. Like me. Bigfoot is like cancer, in my opinion. Did she just say Bigfoot's like cancer? Oh, honey. Bless her heart. No, 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 no. Bigfoot is not like cancer at all. He looked like a Neanderthal man with a lot of hair. About 800 pounds. Massive. God! Is everyone in Bigfooting a hoaxer? Yes. You want your Bigfoot video to be seen? Now's your chance. You know, believe what you want. Believe what you want, run with it. Find your evidence, get what you're doing. Just don't be a dick. Well, you haven't seen nothing yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's be honest here, guys. I refuse to believe in Bigfoot. Tell the listeners how you came to be on a telephone call with Bigfoot. But I think it's real. Not because of these stupid white people making Bigfoot videos on YouTube. The truth with Sasquatch lies with the Native Americans, and it's my job to point out the Bigfoot Rocky Dingo. <laughs> when we first talked about bringing you back on the show this week, I asked you, well, what should we title the show to give people an idea of what we're going to be talking about? And he said, single and Bigfoot hunting. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. know how to take that. So ladies <laughs> out there, if you're looking for a Bigfoot hunter, Michael's your guy. Check it out. All right. <laughs> and he can cook. <laughs> you're supposed to be doing a Bigfoot show. This is just like the gross side of Tinder. Oh, Michael, if you could be on one of our road trips in the back seat, you would laugh your butt off. I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be than in the back seat on a road trip with you two. Aww. Yeah. It yeah. is definitely an interesting time. That is for sure. 
Mm-hmm. So you all had the opportunity to go squashing with me last year in Virginia, but you chose to get facials instead. <sighs> you know, that was something that was, you know, Mama Squatcher was very intent on giving us all facials, and I was like, eating that up. We had activity. It was oh. great. Lauren Coleman, is this your gift to the Bigfoot world? You created the She Squatchers. We heard whoops, uh, definite tree knock. Um, the birds, the whippoorwills, were acting really weird. Like it was almost like they were following something going back and forth around us. It was it was a very ominous feeling. <laughs> okay. Well, next time. We will have to say, Mama, Mama Squatch, Squatcher, please, I'm sorry. We'll have to change the time because we will be out with Michael Cook. Oh, I don't recommend that. No, no. Don't, no, don't do that. We'll go next time. No. Yay. No, girl. <laughs> Standards. Oh. So you're single and ready to mingle? Did you, were you oh. looking for, were you looking for a big footer to find or just a regular old gal? Jokingly. That was all a joke. I am single. You are a joke. Uh, uh, probably the best thing to be right now, cause you, you, it's really life or death now. If you meet somebody new, they could be carrying the corona. The corona. Yeah, blame uh, the coronavirus. You know what I see right now? Three women. Michael Cook, you're gay. Everybody is gay. I mean, I don't think every man wants to f*** men. No, but they're all but gay. But they're gay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're single and ready to mingle? Did you were oh. you looking for were you looking for a big footer to find or just a regular old gal? Oh, Jen, Jenna, my have you ladies fallen from grace? No wonder Tammy doesn't want to be part of this web conference. There's not very much room for another for a significant other right now. If I can, yeah, if I can say that right. There's there's not a whole lot of room. I would love to find somebody. That'd be great. But someone that could go with my schedule and go with my constant, you all know me. I'm always, other than right now because of the crisis, friend, I'm always somewhere. I'm coast to coast all the time doing something. I'm on a plane more than I'm on the ground. And I just... I would have to find somebody that would job with that. Not needy, clingy. Got it. Not needy, clingy, or ready to go when I run ready to go. All right. There you go. There you go. Well, ladies, got it out there. We're advertising. Michael Cook. No, oh, ladies. On Tinder, this is where you would <laughs> yes. swipe so go left. Go cooking, popping, popping. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that's a new awesome word we'll be using from now on. It's just No, I recommend don't. No. Yeah. It's from Ireland. It's a Midwestern no. thing is what it is. Poppin'. Poppin'? <laughs> Shut up, seriously? We've had poppin' oh, for a long time. I didn't know about it. <laughs> How many minutes are we into this show? So I gotta say, uh, we already know that if you go out on a date with my cook, he's gonna take you squatch in at some point. That, you know, that's gonna happen. So but for those who watch the Travel Channel show, know that a squatching date with me can turn out pretty wild. Oh, come on. His ex-girlfriend, Gwen, she has a whole different story about he put her up to do the hoax. It's all bullshit, guys. Um, we had been dating for about a month, and leading up to that night, the third, fourth, the third and fourth we were at, um, very haunted location in Indiana. Haunted. Come straight off of that, and I, <laughs> I actually quit paying my publicist, so I didn't have any. Wait, schedule to speak publicist? Me. You had a publicist? Shut up! God, you didn't have a publicist. You don't even have any money. You don't even have a penis. Publicist? My God! And if you did have a publicist, get your money back, you freaking hoaxer! As soon as people think they've got me figured out, it's something completely different from what they're thinking. <sighs> Ladies. My people must have done it. Yeah. This is bad. You have so much potential. 
And you have people like him and Igor Burtsev from Russia telling you he had a phone call with Bigfoot? Do you want to be taken seriously? Or is this intentionally a shit show? Ladies, you're both very pretty. And when Tammy shows up, she adds a lot to your little show. However, number one, have some pre-prepared questions written down for your interview. Number two, don't be afraid to ask some hard questions to your guests. In fact, you don't want to blindside them so you can let them know ahead of time, hey, we're going to ask you if you're a hoaxer. Number three, vet your guests. Know exactly who and what you're going to be talking to and what you're going to be presenting to your audience. I can't begin to stress this enough with you. Number four, what is this? A sorority house slumber party? Where you guys are flirting and giggling with your guests? This is embarrassing. Set dressing is everything. This brings us to number five, professionalism. Number six, she squatchers? That's a horrible name. It sounds like shit squatchers or she shitters. To people outside of Bigfoot, they're not gonna get it. Branding is everything. I can't stress this enough. Change your name, polish your act. There's no reason why you can't be the best Bigfoot webcast on the internet since my show ended years ago. The potential's there. You can do it. Use the name Bigfoot Chicks. That idiot in Georgia, Melissa Winadare, doesn't own the name. It's not copyrighted. You could be the Northeastern Bigfoot Chicks or the Bigfoot Chicks of Slumber Party Madness on Google+. Okay, let's be real. Melissa Adair will never give up the name Bigfoot Chicks. You'd have to pull it from her dying hands. So, I have a proposal. Ladies, what do you think of this? It's catchy, it's sexy, it's original, it's easy to say, and normal people, not Bigfoot idiots, can remember it. The Bigfoot babes. You're welcome. What the hell were you taking advice from Lauren Coleman? He's always asking people to give him money for his museum with crowdfunding. He can't even pay his bills. Huh. This is why I'm the ass Bigfoot, because I speak the obvious. I have an education. I know what I'm talking about. I should be a publicist. If I was a publicist, you guys would have gone far. What's the direction for your show? And my little Squatch Monsters, you might think I'm a little hard, but I've told the She Squatchers directly all of this on the telephone. Uh-oh. Now it's time for a breakdown. Now, I'm guilty for when I had my own little web interview show, After Hours with Richter, I had people on that were known hoaxers, like Rick Dyer, Justin Smea, Michael Merchant. The list goes on, hell, any of the big names I had on my show could be a hoaxer as well. The thing is, there's no such thing as Bigfoot, period. I even had Bob Gimlin on my show back when I was bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, never thought in a million years a PG film could be a hoax. And when you take off those blinders and you see it for what it is and you know the truth, I've been duped. You're all being duped if you think Bigfoot's real. Go ahead and shoot the messenger. That's me but at least I know the truth, and I'm in it for the truth. Michael Cook, he's a hoaxer, plain and simple, okay? Dude, they're all hoaxers, all right? Anybody that says they saw a Bigfoot, and they're on a YouTube show like this, and they don't have any evidence to back it up with a scientific team, 
They're hoaxers. The Olympic Project and Kathy Strain with the Wood Ant Conservancy are the only two good things going for the world of Bigfoot. Everyone you watch on YouTube, every researcher, every media channel that tells you Bigfoot's real and perpetuates the myth is bullshit. People buy it and believe into it hook, line, and sinker. I've never been a hoaxer and I've never presented any evidence and said it was Bigfoot. On Bigfoot Bounty, I was excited and said that was the sound of a Sasquatch. That was the sound of a Sasquatch. I'm not joking. Because I thought that's what I was hearing was a Bigfoot. I hope it was, but let's be realistic. There's no such thing as Bigfoot. So therefore, what I heard was not a Bigfoot. All you have are con artists, shysters, opportunists, liars, taking advantage of good people like you, wanting you to buy their book, subscribe to their channel, see them at conferences. They'll ask you to give them money to their PayPal. In fact, some have no shame to ask you to help pay for their bills. Right, Lauren Coleman? No shame, no integrity. What kind of human value or worth do you have to do that to people? I have never asked anybody in Bigfoot to give me their money. Gosh, with all this bitching, I'm starting to sound like that Canadian hockey puck, Steve Isdall. But when he's right, he's right. And I can't refute any of this that he says. Those are the facts. There's like this agenda in Bigfoot to keep it going no matter what. How come there's no skeptic in the camera other than Renee Holland, who really isn't a skeptic when it comes to Bigfoot? Because being a skeptic and telling the truth doesn't sell. You're not going to make money in Bigfoot. You're not going to get famous for being on a shitty Bigfoot TV show. I learned that the hard way. People who screw other people over to get on a Bigfoot television show are the worst of the worst. Russell Accord, I'm talking to you. By the way, Russell, since I brought you up, interesting that uh, your thermal footage that you presented on Expedition Bigfoot was filmed at Fort Lewis? That joint Air Force Army base in Washington? I guess it was military training that you're filming? Did you have permission to do that? Could that get you in trouble? And did your producers put that on the show knowingly what you brought them? Hmm, that makes you a hoaxer. God, is everyone in the world of Bigfoot that has been in my fucking life a liar and a hoaxer? Yes. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to them. It's hard to keep an open mind and Bigfoot when you have all these Bigfoot personalities stroking each other, giving each other reach arounds. Over what? Oh, I'm sorry to go on a rant here, guys, but look, there's no viable population for Sasquatch. How can Dr. Jeff Meldrum estimate how many Bigfoot there are in the Pacific Northwest based on orangutan numbers? You know what? How many Mormons can I guess are inside a gay bar right now in West Hollywood? Same thing. It's impossible. The numbers would be high. Let's get back to the show called She Squatchers. Can't wait. We get down on the show, and I'm, I'm going I'm to go ahead and kind of relate the show version to what actually happened. There's everything, I'll state this, everything that happened on the TV show happened, with the exception of two major things, and I'll get to those. Um, yeah, uh, hoaxing and bullshit. Don't run. If you run, we die. Uh, yeah, nothing. Hoaxing. That's what really happened. That's all you need to hear from this mother <laughs> Hoaxer. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Bullshit. Ah! I am a in the field researcher. Are you guys believing this? All right, before I lose my <laughs> we're gonna change the channel 
and watch another She Squatcher video. Maybe it'll calm me down and make me into a Bigfoot believer. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Jen Cruz, and this is the Journey Radio Show. Hey, we're showing up as the She Squatchers, just as we do every Wednesday night. And I've got my trusty teammate on the line. Hey, Jenna Grover, are you there? Why, yes, I am. And boy, oh boy, do we have a wonderful guest tonight. We do. I'm so excited. Uh, we've got Mike Patterson from Sasquatch, Ontario, joining us. You had Mike Patterson on your show? The biggest Bigfoot hoaxer on YouTube? Are you kidding me? Ladies, ladies, this goes back to what I told you earlier. Vet your guests. Know who and what you're talking about. It makes you look like you're guilty by association. Mike Patterson, Sasquatch Ontario, films Bigfoot talking to him in English, but he turns off the camera. Hello, my friend. Mike, bend over. Me, horny. And you people buy into this. Way to go, Mike. Hoaxers rule Bigfoot. Researchers fumble the ball at the 10 yard line and hoaxers like Mike Patterson grab the ball and score a touchdown clear across the field. That's Bigfoot. In fact, the name Bigfoot came from hoaxing thanks to Ray Wallace pranking his employee, Jerry Crew. This is just so disappointing. Oh my God, I'm afraid to see who else is on. Yeah, I'm from the Kwakwakiwak first. You had Florida Thomas Seawood on your show? British Columbia, Canada. Jesus Christ, ladies. Oh, that is awesome. Do you even know what kind of man he is and what he's done to his own people in Canada? <laughs> his own tribe banished him for the desecration of Indian burial boxes that he was opening for tourists to take pictures inside of. Wow. Ew, yuck. Are you kidding me? And we won't even talk about the unethical treatment of animals and what he gets off on or what he does as a fisherman. That man is the biggest piece of sh and you had him on your show too? I love it, I love it. I'm like ready to cry. And I got to see in a Fleur Scout 2, two Sitonga, their Sasquatch is a big male walking across the field and beside it, a shorter pregnant female and she was really pregnant. I'm gonna give you one more chance. I'm gonna watch the Igor Burtsev interview, the famous Bigfoot researcher from Russia who has spent decades looking for Sasquatch. In fact, I met this kind old man a few years ago at a Bigfoot conference. So, we're gonna give that video a shot, but we're running out of time. Be sure to come back next time, and I'll go over this. Part two of the She Squatchers, AKA the Bigfoot Chicks. People say Bigfoot is a weird human. Well, if we had any data, which I would contend we don't, we could look where, what type of human is it? This costume is still more believable than the Patterson Gillen film. And if it's not human, is it a lineage of Gigantopithecus, Denisovans, other taxa? Well, we don't have that data to even test it and others are like well maybe it's not in the tree of life well if it's not in the tree of life it's not living and it doesn't exist
on the next <laughs> Off the Richter. Okay, Igor, um, we would like to discuss back in the barn in Russia. Please tell the listeners how you came to be on a telephone call with Bigfoot. He started to speak because uh, Alex told him that I'm Igor Burtsev waiting for his uh, speaking. He knew me. He knew me before this great. And he said, uh, even I heard my name when he spoke. He trusted me. That is why he started to speak to me. Let's help.